I'm just gonna get uh, all my epoxy ready and get in my iPad and stuff and that way hopefully I don't miss any comments. And then I will start going over what we're gonna be doing. Um, so today we are gonna be doing a six color ombre. So like I said, let me just grab my epoxy real quick because I'm gonna be doing this epoxy method. And it'll only take a second to stir because we're doing epoxy method. So it doesn't matter if there's bubbles in it. So all I have um, right there is um, just a prepped black tumbler. I prepped it, um, sanded it, and I washed it with Dawn. And then um, I just painted it with, uh, let me see if I have it. It's just apple barrel black acrylic paint. And that's all. And I just made sure it was totally dry. I painted it a couple hours ago. So we should be good. And then I'll go over the colors that we're going to be using in a second. And I know you guys were curious, some of you were, um, about how the other ones looked with epoxy on them. And I did epoxy them yesterday, so I'll show you guys that in a second too. Hey! Anybody up to anything good tonight? All right, so I'm almost done with this. And then I'll show you guys those other cups real quick before. So that way I don't end up with it. Just epoxy all over those cups because I'm a slob sometimes. <laughs> Oh, that works. I wish I was in bed. We had to like do like pre-shift overtime all week. I don't like getting up at five in the morning. <laughs> Hi. All right, so let me just turn this on really fast and then I will Grab those cups for you guys. So you can see what they like. So this is the red one with epoxy on it. And this has just um, two coats, so I just I did a flood coat on it. And then this is the obviously the green and like blue one. And then here's the pink one. Am I in the thing? There we go. So um, that is what we're gonna be doing with this guy. So I have a um, 32 ounce cup. And so I have, this color is gonna be on the bottom. I'm starting backwards to tell them to you guys because that's just the way that they're lined up. I am gonna be using them in this order. Um, so this is obsidian. This is like a really pretty black. Thank you. Uh, this is from CC DIY. This green, I don't know where it's from. This is just the empty bottle that I had. So I'm sorry about that. This is like a really pretty, like dark, dark, really dark green. Thank you. Um, this is from the Glitter Horse store. This is Teal We Meet Again. This is like a really gorgeous teal color. And then this is from Miss B's Glitter Palace. This is totally teal chambers. I know you guys were asking. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm in Connecticut. That's cool. Thanks for stopping in. <laughs> and then, so right next to the top, I'm gonna do a seafoam blue. And then on the very top, I'm gonna do um, this Windsor Fine. So a really pretty silver color. And that is what we're working with tonight. So let me actually fix these guys. 
That way they're in order from the color I'm gonna be going with. So the way I do this, it does take a little while. Oh, I think you're in the other part of Connecticut. You're close though. I'm in uh, Windsor Locks. We're doing um, a six color ombre. If all goes well. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put this on my cup and I don't put it on quite as thin as when you do like a one color epoxy method where you put it like really, really thin. So I'm gonna thin this out in a minute after a little bit. Um, Cause it is gonna be fairly thin, but it's not gonna be like drag your hand on it thin, like a general epoxy method. I'm just gonna cover it and then after is when I'll kind of drag some stuff off of it and this way I found too you don't really get the lines um, that can sometimes be an issue with the epoxy method um, just from your fingers when you drag it leaving the lines on it oh cool yeah, there's not many Connecticut people in the craft groups, I noticed. <laughs> Lots of people from like Texas and over in that area. It's cool to have people from all over the place though. Alright, so let me just get my bottom real quick and then I'm going to take a little bit of epoxy off of the top and then we'll get going with uh, the good part. Yeah, it is pretty up here in like the fall and stuff like that. And then the rest of this stuff, I'll probably just pour it in like a little mold or something. I always pour too much. <laughs> so you can see I'm making it thin, but I'm not making it necessarily, like I said, when you do your normal epoxy method where you kind of like drag your hand on it to make sure it's like super thin. And if you're doing like a light color, Especially if it's like a transparent glitter, you might want to try it with um, a white base because you're going to see the black and it's probably going to turn like a grayish color. And you probably don't want that. And you don't have to do this on your turner. This is just the way that I do all of my ombres, or just my glittering in general. I find it the easiest. That way you don't have to keep taking it off and on the turner. All right. So I think I'm good with that part. And then I am gonna have mixed glitter. Um, these colors are extremely similar, so you could definitely get away with like putting them back in the container. So a couple of them I'm gonna do that and then Kind of as I go to the darker colors, I'll probably put them in like a medicine cup, as you can see my little <laughs> depository of dump cups over there, um, to put some molds in and stuff. So, so I'm going to start um, 
Hey. Yes, it was just black um, acrylic paint. Yep, all three cups that I showed you, the pink one, um, the green one and blue one, and the autumn one, they all started exactly like this, just different colors. So I'm gonna start um, with my silver, and I'm just gonna do a silver line on top, and then I'm gonna go in with my second color and kind of coordinate in the middle of them. And if you guys have any questions or whatever, I'll kind of peek in a second, just to make sure I'm not really. Can you turn the fan off? Hang on a second, I have technical difficulties. <laughs> All right, we're good now. Let's try this again. So I'm just gonna do a silver ring around the top. And I'm not gonna make it too big cause I'm gonna skip down to like right here. Um, and that's where I'm gonna start kind of blending my colors together. And then we'll go over this again after. But as you can see, you can't see the black um, base under it at all, even already. leave these open because like I said I'm going to be going back and forth um, with the colors to kind of blend them and you can use like ombre shakers too I've tried those and I like just doing it out of the bottle better personally that's how I like to do it but the, the other things they kind of come out fast like you don't really have the control I don't think So then we'll just get a good strip. And if you go kind of sideways a little bit, it doesn't really matter. It's fine. Because like I said, we're going to be kind of blending these colors up right here. This color is really pretty. I'm sorry, this is the first time I used this one. <laughs> I had to open it. This is a seafoam. That's gorgeous. Okay, so now I'm going to take this color and I'm going to super lightly, I'm going to move my shaker away. And I'm going to really lightly go over this area right here. And I'm going to coordinate with the two colors back and forth in that area. Until I get pretty good coverage in there. And this is really the, the longest part is just doing it slowly right here. So you get like a nice blend in between. Hey. And definitely the easiest thing to do is to use the same kind of cut of glitter. I like to use um, the fine glitter. The ultra fine is kind of like too fine, I, it seems to do this, at least in my personal preference. And it kind of just goes like chunky in weird ways when you do it. And then I'll probably go over it with the blue one more time and that's when I'm gonna go um, over the top silver part and kind of fill in these areas a little bit.
All right, so now that I have that around there pretty good, now I'm gonna go over in this area a little bit heavier with the silver part. And then I'll go lightly over there. And then I'll do the same thing with the blue and I'll bring it up into the other area. So I'm kind of going, if it wants to come out, <laughs> kind of going a little heavier where I started my blue line. And then I'll go lighter where this part is right here. Just to kind of get like the blends going on up there. to our next color and this is pretty much already covered so I'm not worried about it kind of going out right there it's fine that's why I like to do it slow too because if it by some chance comes out in like a big glob like that it's not really that super of a big deal because you're just layering it anyways so it'll be fine is just um epoxy method i just put it on a little bit thicker um than the regular epoxy method that way i could kind of layer the colors um so now i'm going to use this um teal that's a little bit darker than this blue and i'm going to do the same thing so i'll put a ribbon but a little over an inch down And then I'm just going to go real lightly and do the same thing like I did with the other one. And I'm going to layer the lighter blue with this color. And you could use as many colors as you want. Just go, if you're using less colors, just go down a little bit further before you do your next color. And so you just have a bigger area to kind of fade it. But this is a pretty big cup too. This is, like I said, it's, this is a 32 ounce cup, so. And it looks like I'm shaking like 
forever but you can see there's not really anything falling off so there's not really a ton that I'm really shaking out of my shaker it's just like a really fine mess of it um it does take a while yeah <laughs> um I will do a white base if I'm using like a translucent glitter and stuff like that but I found personally I don't have like a you don't really get like that streaking issue like you get sometimes with um epoxy method when you apply your glitter and I do do if I'm using like a lighter color sometimes I'll actually do like a spray paint ombre under my glitter to help um when you're using multiple colors but the black works perfect if you have um a glitter that's not transparent I just think that for some reason it just seems like it kind of makes the color pop. All right, so I'm going a little bit heavier now with the blue that I used right here. And then I'll go over it in this area with that darker blue. I don't know if these look like the same color on camera but they're definitely they look different in person but I know sometimes the camera would be making things look funny especially with glitter it's really weird with glitter <laughs> thank you oh goodness yeah be safe So this color is the color that's already on there. So I'm gonna be going back and forth with this color. And this is my new color that I'll be adding right here. So I'll be going back and forth with the color that's above it and the new color. Hello, hello. Uh, we're doing a six color ombre. So this is where you're going to start to see like the difference with the colors. Cuz this one has a pretty big uh temperature difference, but they're the same color family, so they're not too too hard to make them blend nice. So I had this one. This is the darker one. So I'm just going to lightly shake that one and then I'm going to come back with the lighter color. This is, I like it when you get into like the darker colors because you can really kind of start to see the difference with the contrast. And then this is the lighter one. So I'm just going back and forth for you guys that might have just tuned in or whatever. I'm just going back and forth with the two colors. And I don't know if you guys can see how it just makes it, you can kind of see how it makes it blend once you start kind of adding a couple layers of it on there.
and I'm kind of going up here too I'm not worried if it kind of sprinkles a little bit up there um because it'll help also create more of kind of like the ombre effect from bringing it up into the other colors just a little bit so now since I have pretty good coverage on here I'm gonna go over with this lighter one um, a little bit heavier on the top just like I did with the other ones And then I'll do the same thing with the darker. And then I think I wanna go this area right here. I want to go over that just one more time with the lighter color because I can see a couple areas and then we'll move to the next one. So you saw when I kind of put it on the cup there was a really big color difference but once I kind of blended the colors out um, there's not like a gigantic difference anymore just because it blends. All right, so let me keep these guys in order so I don't mix them up. <laughs> yeah, there's all different kinds. There's ones that look like little leaves. Um, hang on one second, I think I have some. I may be lying right now. I just rearranged my craft room. There's like little tea balls you can get to. And they basically do the same thing. I'm sorry. I thought they were right there, but they're not. So you pretty much just put the glitter in it. And it's just like, has finer holes in it. And you just kind of shake it lightly over um, to do your ombres. And it does work well. Uh, yes. So you're gonna do uh, a solid color. This is a strip of a solid. This is the one I'm gonna be using. Um, and then now I'm gonna put this color and then the gap in between is where I'm gonna be alternating the two colors. So this strip will have both colors in it. And then this one, like I said, I'm not really sure where this one came from, so I apologize. And then we'll finish off uh, after this color we're gonna do the black so now in this gap right here I'm gonna take my darker color and you could do the lighter one first too if you want it doesn't really matter I kind of do either one Now I'll take the lighter one, the one that was right here. You're welcome. And I'll do a light dusting of that as well. That's why I like to keep the colors in order too over there. Um, because after you kind of blend them, sometimes it can be hard to tell which color you used where. And there might be some spots kind of after that you want to touch up. And it makes it easier to remember which color you use, especially if you're using multiple colors, uh, like in this case. So now I'll take my darker. And you can kind of tell when it's ready to go over um, with like a darker, a heavier coat of glitter, because you'll start to notice that your glitter starts to kind of stand up a little bit versus kind of laying down when you first plop it on there. Oh, 
I'm sure you guys can hopefully see that in the camera. The difference here versus right here. Now I'll do, I think, one more with this, and then I'll go back and I'll do a heavier um, coat with the lighter one, and then I'll do the darker. And I think the most important thing about this is, like, not to rush it, because it does, it does, it is a little time-consuming, but um, I found the best way to do it is just to be patient, kind of, with the layering process. Because, like I said, I have tried mixing the two colors together. I'm not a real big fan of it um, as far as mixing them separate and then sprinkling it on. I think it's just, for me, it's easier just to do them separately. All right, so now I'll go in, and that, this right here is um, this color. This is the lighter color. <clears throat> so I'm going to kind of do a little bit heavier kind of more up here. But it doesn't have to be, like, super exact just in that spot. Because right now it's just going to stick to the little bit of areas that might not be, um, might not have any glitter stuck to it yet. And now I'll go with my darker and I'll do the same thing. And frequently, and I may do that again, I'm going to go back one more time um, with the lighter color just to kind of add a little bit more depth to the top of it right here. I just think it helps it kind of, it does make a difference. It kind of puts the lighter color on top and gives more of a blended look to it. So I'm just putting it on like really light on top of that part. And then we'll move on to our black. All right, so now I'm going to do my black glitter. They have, um, I have a ton of these I got to buy in. I think they sell these like at Michael's too. Um, all those shakers that I'm using right now, they literally have like different size holes with them. I personally like the bigger ones. Um, I used to like the smaller ones better, but now I just feel like it takes forever to get like coverage on it. So down here, I'm just going to start because there's not going to be anything else really down here except for my black glitter. So I'll just cover that and then I'll sprinkle it light right here and I'll layer that last green color with the black. And I actually got, I can let you guys know how they work out. I just ordered some spice shakers from Amazon. I think, I want to say it was like $12.99. I think, something like that. It was really cheap. Um, and they do have the double sides on them. And they're not identical to these, but they're very similar where they have like the opening. Because I have tons of bags of glitter. And they're in a drawer, so I don't, I kind of miss seeing the color sometimes and I'll find it after when I'm already been looking for it because <laughs> I have like a lot of glitter in my drawer all right so this is hard to see obviously right here but I went around with a light layer of that and now I'm just going to do the same thing and alternate with my green color
And if you guys are worried about how long this takes too, you can do a smaller cup the first if you want to try it or whatever. Like I said, this is a 32 ounce cup. So it's a pretty decent size, but I do realize that this does take obviously longer. You could probably do a crop load of <laughs> regular ombres in the time that I do one of these. Um, so from a light to a bold color, I would say, honestly, usually when I do that, I'll base paint my cup two different colors. So, uh, if I'm going from like a white glitter to like a black glitter, uh, and it's just a regular ombre, I will spray paint ombre my cup first. And then when I do my actual ombre, um, I'll kind of start blending it near where the ombre kind of gets fuzzy, like with the black and the, uh, the white areas. I found that's the easiest way to get it. Because even with the black and white ombre, kind of when you put your epoxy on, the white glitter, you can always kind of see it changes and you can see the other glitter underneath it. So if you do like the ombre kind of thing, it'll help a lot with that. All right, so now I'm gonna go over this area because I have pretty good how I want it right there. Now I'm gonna go over this part right here with this to make it darker. So I'm gonna do kind of the heavier handed, like I was saying before with this, and then I'll do the black. Yes, this um, I'll save it. Uh, I'll try to. T I'll do gonna do the hashtag replay for it, and I'll do the hashtag uh, six color ombre. So if you guys are looking for it, you could just put it in the search bar, um, and either one of those should bring it up for you, so you can watch it whenever you want. And then I think we are good. So like I said, I didn't put as thin of a coat on here. Um, so when you're all done, you definitely want to make sure it's not a really thick coat, but you definitely want to make sure that you don't have any like wet spots like right here. So I'm going to want to go over with my silver just a little bit just to make sure I don't have any little funny areas kind of hanging out. So I'll just kind of sprinkle it lightly over that. So I'll just, I think I'm just gonna sprinkle, I'll lightly go down with my colors just to make sure. And this will kind of add just one more kind of layer of color on this too. This is that color that was kind of funny. I have so many different shakers right now that I'm using. It's kind of throwing off my game. So I don't know if you guys can see how it just really, even adding just that last little bit, like the dusting, it just kind of really ties everything together. And like I said, this way you don't end up, because now it's been spinning for a while, so if your glitter is gonna lay down and do some like funny wet spot stuff, now is the time it's gonna do it. So this is the perfect time uh, to fix it. And this is why I was saying it was important to kind of try to keep your colors in order. <laughs> that way you're not trying to guess what to put where after. And you kind of go back for this last little part. So 
So this green kind of goes down kind of far because I blended the black with it. So there was kind of more green at the bottom. So I'm just coming down really lightly farther than I did with the rest of them. Obviously just because it kind of comes down so far. And then we'll do our black and we're done. And I'll do the bottom too, but um, I don't want to bore you guys with that part. Unless you want me to. <laughs> but I'm just going to take it off the turner and glitter the bottom. It's not really anything very exciting. Does anybody have any questions? Let me peek and make sure I didn't miss any comments real quick. Thank you. <laughs> yes, um, I use the same technique. So if I'm doing, say like a silver and a black ombre, I'll come down and I'll skip, um, I would be a bigger place I would skip. That way there's kind of like a bigger blend area. So I'd probably come down with my silver to about here and my black to about here. And that's when I would kind of start blending them and then as it fills in more, I would go in a little bit heavier with the black and then a little bit heavier with the silver and kind of do the same thing until it's blended. That's not waste glitter, girl. Don't worry. <laughs> I make molds and little key rings and um, I have like bracelets and all sorts of stuff. I have hundreds of molds, it's crazy. <laughs> Um, so after this, I um, just seal it really, really well with triple thick, um, and then I'll do a fun coat on it. So I'll add um, a coat of epoxy, and then after about two hours, I will add another coat. And those cups that I showed you guys a little while ago, these, they're super, super smooth. And this is just with a coat and then with a flood coat on top of it, and it made it that smooth. Um, you could start at the bottom or the top. I would recommend always starting with your lighter color. I've tried it both ways and it's easier to kind of get your lighter colors laid down and put the darker on top and layer them um, versus having your darker color underneath and then trying to add your lighter color on top, if that makes any sense. Um, this one right here is uh, CC DIY, the medium viscosity, but I also use the regular. That works fantastic too. I like them both a lot. Um, you can use fast set. I wouldn't recommend it for this because this does take a while. So I would not recommend a fast setting epoxy for this. <laughs> And if you guys um, watch the replay or you do have any more questions and you think about it after or whatever the case might be, you could definitely ask in um, the link for this video or you could PM me or you could even ask in the group or whatever the case might be. You could tag me and I will try to answer it as quick as possible. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time and I hope this was helpful, by the way. I hope I didn't confuse anyone. <laughs> but thank you for joining me for this super long ombre. And I hope you guys have a wonderful night. And I will check you out later. Have a good one.